Well, we're joining our problem here already in progress. Um, so we have uh, the hypotheses. Remember, mu less than or equal to 245. Um, null uh, it was the null hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis, mu greater than 245. We had alpha equal to 0 0.05. Remember the rule. If there is no alpha given, we assume 0 0.05. And then we were computing our test statistic. And uh, so we have, so far, we have x bar minus mu zero. Remember what that means. Anytime we have subscript zero, means that number comes from the null hypothesis. All right. Uh, divide by, and then we have s over square root of m with degrees of freedom. And so we have 265.1. These were the given values. 245 was from the null hypothesis. The 42.6 and the 52 were given in the problem. And our degrees of freedom are going to be 51 here. And so now I can get my calculator I have out here. We're going to finish off step three. And we're going to con uh, proceed with uh, step four of finding the, the uh, p-value. So let's see, 265. Uh, sorry, 265.1. And then we're going to divide that by 240. I'm sorry, subtract 200. Goodness, I can't hit any button right. 245. And then divide that by 42.6. Divide by the square root of 52. Close, close. And my number is 3.402. three decimals for t-scores. Three decimals for t-scores. Later, we're going to be computing z-scores here in a different type of problem. Z as in zebra. Uh, Z uses two decimals. T, tango, uses three decimals. So uh, we have uh, 3.402, so just round to the third decimal place and our degrees of freedom are 51. So that's our result from our step three. Next comes our step four, which is the p-value. This is not the same thing as the binomial probability of success. Um, this has come to us from a different place. It's a bit unfortunate we use the same letter, but context is everything, and it's not usually a problem keeping straight which is which. Now, the p-value, whenever we have the t-score, t, the procedure for finding the p-value is, is one way for using the t, tango, using the t-scores. And it's a different procedure if, for, to find the p-value if we have z, Zulu, uh, dip, uh, the, for the uh, test statistic. So depending upon what we inherit from step three will influence how we work step four. So this now is a procedure for uh, finding the p-value in step uh, for the t-value, in this case, 3.402 with 51 degrees of freedom. So for now, I'm going to talk about just how to find it. And then a little later, we'll talk about, okay, what does that mean? Why is this doing what we say it's doing? For us, for now, it suffices to say we need the t-table from before. And we're at 51 degrees of freedom. So everything we're doing in this problem is going to be in the 51 degrees of freedom row. And our value is 3.402. 3.402. So this now is the procedure. We're in 51 degrees of freedom. And 3.402. The procedure is this. We find the two values in the 51 degrees of freedom row. If this number actually is in here, so much the better. It almost never will be. So what we do, 3.402 in 51 degrees of freedom, all right? We find the two numbers between which this falls. So I'm in 51 degrees of freedom. I want to find the two numbers between which 3.402 will fall. 3.258, this is 3.492. 
3.258, 3.492. Find the two numbers between which it falls. So we have 3.258, and we have 3.492. So this is the procedure we'll work with. Let's go back to the full screen. All right. So we had 3.258 is less than the number we require, 3.402, which is less than 3.492. Find the two numbers between which our value falls. There are a couple what ifs. We'll, we'll cross those bridges when we come to them. But for now, find the two numbers between which it falls, All right? So it falls between 3.258 and 3.492. In our table, that was right here in this position. The next piece is this. Look up to the top or bottom, because this table is so well constructed. But look up to the top of the table and find the two bold-faced numbers in the heading title, or heading line. This is point zero zero one. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to write down the zero in front of the decimal. Point zero zero one and point zero 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 five. Point zero zero one and point zero 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 five. So, the number at the top of this column was point zero zero one. Number at the top of this column is 0 0.0005. That's all we need from the table. Find the two numbers between which it falls and then find the numbers at the top or bottom of that, of that column. The p-value we're looking for, because of the structure of the t-table and really as much as anything because of the requirement of degrees of freedom, we cannot find the number we're looking for precisely. The number we computed is going to give rise to the p-value that we want. The problem is we cannot find, because of the structure of the t-table and a few other technical details, we cannot find it precisely. But what we can find is this. Since 3.402 falls between these two numbers, the p-value we seek falls between these two numbers. That's all we need to know. Now, one other small detail is this. 3.2, this is the smallest in this row. 3.402 is the middle size in this row. 3.492 is the largest in this row. But 0 0.001 is the largest number in this row. It's a little hard to see with all these decimals. 0 0.0005 is the smallest number. This is a way to think of it. In fact, this is what actually is happening. This is now the T scale, not Z. And we have our three numbers. 3.258. I'm going to make a bigger picture here. All right, we have 3.258, we have 3.402, this is the number we want, and we also have 3.492. Let me show you what these small numbers represent. These are probabilities. If we erect these vertical lines, then this area is the point zero, zero, 0.001. Erect this vertical line at 3.492. That corresponds to this number, point zero, 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 0.0005. We can see that's smaller. So the number point zero, zero, 0.001, that is all of this area. That's the biggest. 0 0.0005, that's this region, that's the smallest. The number we want is here, that's the middle size. So, for that and a few other technical reasons, it means this. 
Large number here, sorry, 3.258. Small number here corresponds to large number here. And large number here corresponds to small number here. The upshot of that is this. This is less than, this is less than, this must be greater than. These get reversed. These get reversed. This is less than, this is greater than. These get reversed. So when you find less than here, this must be greater than. When you find less than here, this must be greater than. So 0 0.001 is greater than the p-value we seek, which is greater than 0 0.005. That's all we need in our computation for the p-value. The p-value we have is somewhere between those two numbers. That's all we need to find.